For 38 years, I've been flying around the world giving speeches at conventions and conferences like this, and I've had the privilege of working with close to 3,000 audiences. And what I've found is that there are three very identifiable groups of people out there. There are optimists, there are pessimists, and there are those who say, I'm not a pessimist, I'm not an optimist, I'm a realist. realist. Okay, the optimist says, somewhere, somehow, there's a way. Okay, the pessimist says, "Uh uh-uh, there is no way, you might as well give up, forget it, it's not going to work. The realist says, and I can prove it. (laughs) Am I right? Every time a realist opens his or her mouth, they open it to say something negative. See, all of us need to be realistic in acknowledging what's there in the world, but it's how we look at what's there in the world that determines whether we see possibilities in it, no possibilities in it, hey Robert, (laughs) and whether we see possibilities that have been negated by current reality. See, a realist, typically a realist attitude is this. They'll say, I've looked at the situation and based on the current reality, it can't be done. Well, when's the last time the current reality was the ongoing reality? Like, I think never, right? I mean, life, the world, everything is in a constant state of change. So if all you look at is the current reality, of course the limitations will be the only thing you see. Who trained you how to think? Who taught you to look at the world the way you look at the world? I'm suspecting that you and I were trained by people much younger than we are right now. It was either ourselves at a younger age when we didn't have the knowledge, the wisdom, and the information in our hands to make those kind of decisions, or it was people we were listening to who didn't necessarily have our best interest in mind, right? Or it was sources that we had been taught to respect that didn't necessarily justify us investing that respect in them, right? A lot of times we've let other people train us in how to think. I think we ought to train us how to think. Could I get an amen to that one? Thank you. Say hallelujah. I'm from the South. That's how we affirm things, all right? You remember when Matthew McConaughey got the Academy Award? He stepped up there. He did such a beautiful job of receiving that and and acknowledging people and acknowledging his his creator and such. And he said, you know, when I was a 15-year-old kid, a man asked me, who's your hero? And I said, it's me 10 years from now. He said, because that guy's so much better than I am. He said, then I got to 25, and the guy said, now who's your hero? Me 10 years from now. He said, I'm never as good as I could be. It's a moving target. I'll never reach it. But if I'm not aspiring to be better and better and better than I've ever been, then I stop growing. And when you stop growing, naturally, all you see, Donnie, are limitations. That's it. That's all that's out there, right? So optimist, pessimist, realist, let's just, let's just kill that argument to start with. Optimism is the only healthy way to look at the world. Yes? yes. Yeah. Okay. And we ought to be the ones training ourselves in how to look at things. In 1979, I got a call from an outfit called Tidy Car. Tidy Car was based in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Toronto, basically. And uh, they were an auto detailing company, and they sold a $1,500 package that if you bought it, you got a franchise to be a tidy car dealer. And so as a tidy car dealer, you got to go out and detail cars using their method. And it was a very impressive method that worked real well. And so thousands of people from around the world bought the tidy car franchise, and tidy car started offering training for all these people so that they could grow their business. And I was brought in as the flavor of the month to do the training in Chicago in January of 1979. Let that sink in for a minute. Where'd I go in the month of January? Chicago. 1979, one of the hardest winters they ever had in that city. They had to dig the cars out. I was there, got to enjoy that. Well, anyway, I was there training this group of tidy car people. I had a group about the size of this segment of the audience. And I was doing a seminar on how to build your business. 
and just, you know, basic business skills, how to build your business. And there was a guy in the front row, 19-year-old kid, had white hair, white eyebrows, innocent-looking face, looked like he'd never had a dirty thought. You know, I mean, just, he's, he's just there like this, you know, and he's, boy, he's writing notes, and everything I say, he's writing it down. And his name's Tim Seward. And uh, at the end of my seminar, he came up and he said, excuse me, Mr. Cathcart? And I said, yes. <laughs> and he said, can I ask you a question? And I said, sure. He said, hey, could I sit with you at lunch? Okay. So we went to lunch. We sat down together. He asked me a thousand questions, it seemed. <laughs> and then he said, he said, can I ask one last question? Okay. Do you have a quote? A quote? Yeah, you know, a motto, a, a slogan, but something I could use to motivate myself every day. I said, no. <laughs> and he said, really? And I said, no, no, I have something better. I have a question. And I want you to ask this question to yourself every single day, as often as you can think of, to ask the question. He said, okay, what's the question? I said, ask yourself, how would the person I'd like to be do the things I'm about to do. He said, so I think of someone I want to be like, and I, I said, no, 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 that's not it. You think of you in the future, the more advanced, more educated, more enlightened, the more mature, the more successful you, and you ask, how would that version of me do today's tasks? He said, oh, I get it. I said, what do you want to be? What do you want to do? Give me a, a goal. He said, I want to be the international sales leader for Tidy Car. I said, wow, 19-year-old kid, you know, brand new in the business, no experience, no degree. I thought this is gonna be a challenge, but what the heck? I said, okay, every day, ask yourself, how would the person I'd like to be, the international sales leader, Tim, do today's work? He said, okay. So he went back home to Bay City, Michigan. In Bay City, the first thing he did was write that down on a little card and put it up over his workbench. And then he put it above his bed in the bedroom so he'd see it every day. And then he put it on the visor in his vehicle so that he'd see it even more often. Everywhere he looked, how would the person I'd like to be, in his case it was, how would the international sales leader do what I'm about to do? First thing he did was change the way he dressed. He got rid of the t-shirt and jeans, got some coveralls with tidy car on the back, Tim on the pocket. So he's looking official now. He started organizing his files better, and being more professional about that. He started doing a better job for each and every customer, following through much more fully, even polishing the inside of their ashtray in the car when he could. And uh, so he did some pretty impressive work for his clients. Well, his clients spread the word, this guy's great. And Tim had so much business, he had to hire other people. So when he hired other people to help him, he needed a permanent location, so he bought a service station lease and had a location, and he was doing great. His business thrived. Fast forward, end of the year, Tidy Car calls me. They said, Jim, we want you to come to New Orleans, be the keynote speaker at our international sales convention, Hilton Hotel, French Quarter. I go to New Orleans. Sure enough, you know, big, beautiful hotel room. Everything's set up, elegant as can be. Up on the stage, right over here, there is a white Chevrolet Corvette. They're gonna give that to the international sales leader. So, nobody knows who's won, but everybody knows who's in the running, and of course, Tim's one of those in the running. But anyway, the evening goes on, I do my speech, and I turn the mic over to Gary Gorenson, the president of the company. He comes up to the front. He says, ladies and gentlemen, you're not gonna believe the contest this year. He said, talk about close. The person in position number two led number three by only one point. Three led four by one point. Four led five by two points. Five led six by one point. It was close, except for number one. The person who won the contest, number one, led number two by 300 points. For first place, there was no contest. Welcome with me, your international sales leader from Bay City, Michigan, Tim Seward, the place went insane. Man, I mean, music's playing, spotlights are sweeping the room. The people loved Tim. They picked him up on their shoulders. They're dancing around the room. People hugged each other. You know, some people took advantage of that. It was just fun. <laughs> so 
it's a great place to be in a great moment. And they dropped Tim on the stage, and he's up there caressing the Corvette as much as you can do that to a car. And I came up, and I made my way through the crowd, and I gave him a bear hug, and I said, man, congratulations. I said, what did you do? He said, I just did what you said in Chicago. I said, specifically. <laughs> Really? I mean, what was so good that, and he said, the daily question, how would the person I'd like to be, and so he told me the story I just shared with you. And I said, Tim, I'm so proud of you. Good for you. He said, it gets better. It gets better? He said, yeah. He said, you know, I didn't know if I'd won. I was getting ready to come to New Orleans, and I asked myself, well, I don't know if I've won, but how would the international sales leader go to New Orleans. Well, Jim, I figured he'd go first class. One way. No. He said, yeah. I said, no, seriously. You bought a one-way ticket to New Orleans, didn't know you'd won. Uh-huh. And I said, doesn't that seem a little foolhardy? He said, think I'll need a ride? <laughs> Good for Tim, huh? Yeah, great for Tim. What a guy, amazing guy. So, <laughs> so Tim had his ride home. Now, I do not suggest that you buy a one-way ticket to wherever you want to go and hope to win your way back home. Bad strategy. But I do suggest that you do what Tim did and take charge of your own thinking and use that daily question to stimulate your own thinking every day. Because with one simple question, he transformed his entire life. He did. I didn't do it. He did it. So in 1998, I flew to Fort Myers, Florida, and I was met at the airport. Now remember, this is a long time later. That was 79. 98, I fly to Fort Myers, and I'm met at the airport by a 39-year-old man named Tim Seward. Exactly. We drive to his home in Naples, and we dine by his indoor swimming pool. woo <laughs> And he tells me about his life. And I said, what did you do? He said, well, I built my tiny car franchise, and I was really successful, and then I sold it. So I built another business supplying people like that, and I sold that and built a third business, and I just sold that this last December for $7 million. I said, well, what are you doing now? He said, I'm retired. <laughs> I said, at age 39, he said, well, I'm going back to school to get my MBA, I'm traveling the world, and I'm managing my investments. I said, Tim, I just got one question. He said, what's that? Do you have a quote, <laughs> slogan, you know, a motto I could use to motivate myself every day? He said, yeah, Jim, every day ask yourself, how would the person I'd like to be do the things I'm about to do? We need to take charge of training our thinking. Now, you heard that with your head. Now I'd like you to hear that with your heart. Sing along with me. How would the person I'd like to be do the things I'm about to do? Looks much better when you get a higher view. How would the person I'd like to be Do the things I'm about to do If you want to make a better world Be a better you You sing How would the person I'd like to be Do the things I'm about to do So much better when we can see From a higher point of view How would the person I'd like to be do the things I'm about to do If you want to make a better world Be a better you Be a better you Be a better you Thank you. Thank you so much.